What is up, guys? I am so happy to say that the day has finally come where I've ordered a lift for the damn garage. You guys have been busting me since I've moved in here and you're telling me why don't you go get a damn lift. I have been a jack stand man like for as long as I can remember. Um, I did all my major builds including the Turbo NA Miata, the All Motor ITB NB Miata, the Black FDR X7, and the S2000 builds all on jack stands. And I just turned 33 this weekend and I feel like I'm at the point now where I need to start conserving my back a little bit and uh, do things a little bit more professional. So I ordered the lift. Uh, I had to prioritize things because after closing on this property, um, there was a great deal of craziness to get everything sorted and get all the issues straightened out. So um, I had to prioritize a little bit, but I'm in the position now where I was able to pony up and, and get the first one in. So I didn't get it in, but I, I ordered it and it's on its way here. So I'm really excited about that. But before we go into what lift I chose, I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that I ran into because this whole lift, the whole lift installation thing is new to me and some of the questions that I had and things that I wasn't sure of, you guys may be interested in too and, and just kind of trying to understand what it takes to install a lift in your own garage. So when I started shopping lifts, the first brand I went to naturally was Rotary. That was the name that was always thrown around growing up in the car world. and. You know, so that was that was my first stop. But what I ran into rather quickly, and I'm gonna show you guys right now, um, that put the kibosh on going with the rotary is. So as crazy and overbuilt that this garage is, I don't have the ceiling height to fit any standard rotary two post lifts. Um, and also this beam right here is an issue too. But just to kind of give you what we're working with for, for uh, size reference here, this is an eight foot ladder. So if he gets you up to about there, I'm 135 inches to the bottom of the beam and then 145 or somewhere around there to the, to the heat panels on the upstairs floor. So basically any standard two post lift is out of the question for me. Um, and then and the other issue is, is the width. So if I wanna run a full or full width, I'm gonna have clearance issues underneath the steel beam here. So that's the other problem. Rotary had a lift that was narrower, but the, the literally the tops of the posts would be touching the, the, the upstairs floor. So the, 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 the clearances were gonna be way too tight. So I had to start looking for the low profile lifts, which have the shorter, which have the shorter posts, and then the whatever the electronics and the hydraulics, whatever goes underneath, instead of running on top, it runs along a floor plate on the ground, which is not, as ideal, but it will, it will allow me to do the lift in the garage here. So running a lift, a low profile lift, will allow me to use, get the full length. So it's gonna put me out to about here at the end of the post, which is like 145 inches or something. The, the model that I chose allows two configurations. You have a narrow and a wide. What you're seeing here for the tape measure is the wide configuration. And this is, and this is the lift right here, I'm gonna show you. So after things didn't pan out with rotary, I looked at the Revolution, which was, a, which was this style of lift, but the Revolution didn't get me the height. And ultimately, the reason why I am cho choose this bend pack here is because the main the number one priority is, is, the, is the minimum minimum height. This has low profile arms, so it can do three and a half to four inches on the minimal pad height. Now, the lowered cars and all the small sports cars, that is like, that is key to being able to get them underneath there. But two, it's the max lift height. The Revolution model can only do 72 inches max pad height um, with no adapters. Con assuming I'm putting sports cars up, I'm not gonna be able to get up higher with, you know, I'm not gonna be able to use adapters to get up higher, so I'm gonna have to use the minimal pad. This model has the adjustable pads, which gives you some extra height, so you can get 73 to 75 inches with the thing fully raised. Now I'm five foot 11, so having that is like the difference of being able to stand underneath the car fully and not. So that was ultimately what won me over with the Ben Pack. They're, they're, they're priced similarly, um, give or take like a hundred bucks. I think they're within the same ballpark. The other thing that's kind of nice with the Ben Pack is, is that it's this gunmetal gray color. And, I, and my floors are all gray after I did all the coatings. Wow, camera, holy crap. I'll let the color correction set in here for one second. But the floors are all gray. 
So having, having the gray posts is, is really going to help. Uh, I think it's going to just blend a lot nicer in the garage than the, than the, uh, the blue posts would. So that is why I'm going with that model. Other considerations that I have to take are the garage doors. With the, with the garage door opener, I'm no longer going to be able to run this because you can see there's my 8-foot ladder. I'm coming pretty close to the garage door. So that's got to come out. But luckily, and I'm shopping these out right now, and when, as, I, as we get into the installation bits, I'll show you the install for it. There are garage door openers that you can get now that mount on the side here, and they can grab the, the, uh, the rod that the, that, that the cable wraps around um, and twist there and you can raise the garage that way so they're like a low profile space saver garage opener. So I think I will have enough clearance. The ceiling, as you can see, comes in at an angle up here, but I think I can get it to work up there. That beam may be in the way. If it is, you can mount them lower, like somewhere down here, and you can get a, a chain and pulley that will wrap, you clamp a wheel onto the, onto the rod up above, and you can run a chain around the gear and it'll, and it'll twist it from there. Mounting it on this side of the garage because I have an outlet right here that I can run power to it. If I did the middle here, not only would it be much tighter because I'm in between, but that beam is like kind of more in the way of that, of that one and I have no power over here. So I'm gonna be doing the, the low profile garage mount over there. Um, that's not gonna stop the list installation because this is just gonna come down and um, you know, I can always just lock the door manually in, in the meantime. So the other thing is the, is the electrical requirements. Now, as you can see, I, I have electrical everywhere in here. And this wasn't when I, when, I, when I closed on this property, the floors weren't done and all the electrical wasn't done. It was just temporary electrical ran everywhere with, with just hanging wires. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop a picture of it in right now. So that's what, the, that's what the garage looked like when I, when I closed. I buttoned up all the, all the electrical, ran everything. There, the, the property was foreclosed, so I have no real records of what, what is what. So I had to do a lot of like kind of figuring out. I wanted the, the lighting system modular because I wasn't sure on the, place, on the placements of all the LED lights. So that's why I just, I went with the junction box route. And, and this allows me to be flexible with moving the lights. So like in this case with the lift, I may have to move these lights a little bit, but that's not a big deal because literally I could just unplug them from their outlet and then, and then just relocate the anchors that are screwed into the wood. That's very easy, no problem. Luckily, and this is just like dumb luck, the electrical requirements for this lift is uh, 220 and it's single phase. That junction box with that yellow wire runs to a two pole 40 amp breaker uh, in, the, in the panel. And it's actually labeled as car lift, which is just like so funny because uh, I guess the guy who built this place was kind of thinking the same idea of putting the lift right here. Now, I would eventually like to add more lifts down the road. Most likely second one over where the white FD is. That's gonna be more for long-term projects. Uh, this, is our, this bay being just a, a single car bay will be uh, the work bay. So it's easy, just the one car in and out, no shuffling cars or anything like that. Um, second lift will eventually go over here, again, budget, but I'd like to put it in either later this year or maybe the beating of next year. And that can be for more long-term builds. And then maybe one day put one where the white 911 is when I'm not as broke and I don't have to store cars for people um, to make some extra money. <laughs> I can maybe put another one there and that can be like for really clean work or doing like demonstra demonstration stuff or like nice underbody shots. So that's, that's a maybe, but um, that's possibly what I would like to do. Now, the last, con there are, um, there's two more considerations that I have to make. So like I said, a lot of unknowns with the property. These floors have radiant heat tubes in them. You can see the upstairs, all the heat panels in the, in the PEX tubing that runs through them. 
There's the upstairs zoning manifold right there. Now on the other side here, I have the downstairs zoning right here. This heating system, by the way, was ridiculous getting this operational and figuring out what is what and plumbing in the boiler. Just wanted to throw that in there. But um, all the tubes run through the ground and you can see there's quite a bit of them. My understanding is, is that this is for the, the big area, the workshop area right here. And then this is for the other side, the parking area. So there's not as many loops that run through that concrete over there. At least that's my understanding of it from people who have been here prior to it being foreclosed and empty. So like being in the town, you, I, meet a, I met a lot of people who know some history and backstory of this place, but I've never actually talked to the guy who built it and walked away from it after like he got caught doing all the sketchy things that he did. So, um, which by the way, it's all legit now with the town. I sorted out all their issues in case anybody's wondering, which took me a while, but uh, it, is, it is legit. So I don't know where the PEX runs in the concrete. It's a complete mystery, but I've been leaving the floor zone off all winter because I knew I was, I was eventually gonna pull the trigger on the lift. And I'm gonna, a buddy of mine's got a very high powered thermal hunting scope. He's a firefighter and he was able to use it in scenarios at his work to home out heat pipes and walls. So I'm hoping that if I crank up the floor zone, which it'll immediately flood through with hot water um, from the boiler, because the boiler's still running. Once, it, once I started in the winter, I've been running it all winter until the spring. So the, there, there'll be hot water exchange running through the floor tubes. And I am hoping that by that I can mark out where where the pex is so we when we drill we don't hit it now it isn't the end of the world if you hit one you can always shut off that one particular loop but i have no idea how tightly wound they are in the floor so that is another hurdle that i have to to deal with the last thing is this floor has pitch and i think it was for water drainage which i kind of discovered this year um and i've been washing cars in here which is delightful versus washing them out in the cold like I've always done. But you can kind of see as it gets taller, the uh, the foam concrete there, I, it's foam block or something that's, that sits in the concrete, but you could see like it's, it's, it's shorter over there and as you get down, down, it gets taller and taller and taller. So there is a pitch to the floor. So given that, I'm, I'm hiring somebody to actually uh, mount and anchor the lift into the floor for me because I don't want to have it come out stupid or unlevel and um, you know that's just about it. So we're going to be bringing somebody in for that and we'll be documenting the installation. Uh, the lift I'm buying from that website ASC Deals. Um, I search them out. I always shop. I'm a bargain shopper. I always look for the most competitive pricing. They were there's a couple places that, that offer competitive pricing. They were the first one. Uh, they accepted PayPal. So I used my PayPal credit account, which is six months, 0%. No interest as long as you pay it off within six months. So I like putting bigger purchases like that on 0% stuff. It just makes it easier for me to kind of do some of the stuff that I do without having to make a big financial upfront commitment. So that, that was another selling factor. But what turns out, and it was funny, is that they are literally like 25 minutes away from where I live now. After calling them and having a conversation, I think he's the owner, his name's Brian, very nice guy. He was very helpful and, and answered all my questions. It was just funny to find out that they're right local in Connecticut, which is great because if I ever have any issues, then I could just go right to them locally, which is kind of nice um, if there's any issues. But Ben Pack has been around for a while. They seem to be pretty reputable. Uh, I did my research and I don't think I, I don't really have any apprehensions going with them after what I've read. A lot of people seem to have success using them. So we're gonna be doing a little bit more, but I want to do this kind of as an intro just because I've been documenting the garage build and things that I've been doing. So I, I thought this would be, this deserved its own component because otherwise it's gonna be one long ass video for the whole lift install. So the next segment is gonna be the, the components that are my responsibility. So that's gonna be removing the garage door opener. I'm gonna to have to, I'll, I'll document when we try to map out those PEX tubes in the floor and then the, the running the electrical. Now, I like I said, I super lucked out because that outlet is just like right here. So literally, I'm just gonna move this junction box, backtrack it a little bit, bring it to about, here 
um, which is like kind of near the garage door opener, and then just have it somewhere like right over there, which will be so easy to move because there's already holes drilled and I could just run it through existing holes. So that's another thing that I have to do because as the buyer, you are responsible for running the electric. Um, the gentleman who I have coming in to do the installation, he said something like he wouldn't mind, you know, if I have the electrical man, he'll like, he'll make the connections for me, but it's, it's, it's only a couple wires. It's like, it, there's really not much to it once you're there, but you do have to supply the electrical because typically they don't do that. So those are the major things that I'm gonna be responsible for. And in part two of this, we will be going over those and then the third part will be the installation of the lift, how they install it and what the requirements are. I think they're going to be doing a little, they're going to have to do something with concrete to, to kind of deal with the pitch on the floor. And then also drilling for the bolts to, to lag it down. And then the last part will obviously be the lift in action. And I'll give you guys my thoughts on whether I'm happy with it or if I made a huge, terrible mistake. So. That's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. So look forward for part two, and uh, we'll go from there. Till next time, done.